Spawn Armageddon, starring, well, not Keith David. Hey, whoa, hi, I'm back, I guess. After like three months of only doing the occasional live stream and posting a shitzillion cosplay pics on Instagram. Go follow me. That's like six years in YouTuber time. How has the platform evolved since I left? Oh, it's only gotten way worse, okay. Well, even though YouTube is having a sad Armageddon, we won't let it deter us from having a fun apocalypse of our own. This review was requested by New York firefighter and Gotham cast member Diego Rivera for the $100 tier on Patreon. He's done some reviews of games over on his channel too, and they're really great. Go check them out. He was gonna do like a Spawn Games retrospective thing, but I guess he just decided to hand this one off to me for some reason. Maybe because he was going to be forced to review it under duress and he'd rather I suffer it instead. Well, I sure am spending a lot of time not talking about this Spawn game. Okay, fine, let's get into it. I'm a little rusty with writing these, please bear with me. It's not my first time reviewing something with Todd's greatest embarrassment, even though I think he's pretty cool still. You can also watch my video about that awesome animated series Spawn had. That was great. Is this great? Probably not. Let's find out. <coughs> uh, g a gameplay, I, I guess. Well, this one's a pretty typical third-person hacky sack and slash in which you play as Al Simmons, a ripoff of Ghost Rider that not enough people call out for that. You can swing your axe, you can shoot projectile weapons, and you can very awkwardly platform. Right off the bat, I loaded this game up and I hated the controls because the melee is circle and the projectile is square, plus a bunch of other dumb stuff. This feels so awkward to play that I never got used to it and instead opted to rebind all the buttons to something closer to like a standard Spectacle Fighter. Like your God of Wars, or your Devil May Cries, or your Heavy Rains. Although I very quickly noticed an issue. Okay, so check out my basic combo with the axe. Alright, here's a heavy attack. Maybe I can mix those two up a little? Eh, kinda, but not really. Well then let's just... Yeah, no, that's, that's all there is. You can't do a single other thing with this axe. Just these same four hits. Well that kneecaps a huge amount of the gameplay right there. It gets so tedious because you feel like you get no variety in the combat. It also doesn't help that this enemy AI is sort of weird and busted. Sometimes you can just stand behind them and hit them in the back of the head like an urban inner city youth's vine and they have no defense for it. Turn around, Spider-Man over there. Alternatively, Al Bundy doesn't have a block ability either. So if they hit you with a long combo attack, you gotta just stand there and take it like Brackett's clever comic pun. Fuck, I forgot to write one again. Well, the melee combat is a snooze fest, but you get a pretty decent amount of different projectile weapons. Uh, honestly, it feels like they all do the same amount of damage and I can't tell a couple of them apart in the heat of combat. Some of these weapons are also so big that you can hardly walk while carrying them and it can really mess you up. Like, alright, say you're fighting someone with pistols but they run out of ammo. It'll default you to carrying this weapon that's so huge you can't jump or run and it leaves you open to a lot of cheap shots. It's just clunky and frustrating. The magic powers are pretty useless for damage and it's easy to forget you have them. Just use these chains. They can be used indefinitely, they don't need to recharge, they do a decent amount of damage, and you can just casually sidestep around your enemies while poking them repeatedly. God, that just looks more annoying than badass. Fucking stop! Just stop poking me with the chain spawn. Stop! Why are you- Come on, man. What's the- Stop walking out of the- Fuck! Spawn's walk cycle is really stilted, and it looks like he has to take a poo, but he's not quite sure where the bathroom is, so he's just kind of clenching it while going about his daily activities. Look at him. Poor bastard. He's pretending nothing's wrong. Is this a metaphor for the comics industry in the 90s? How the hell do you not have more than one combo for a melee weapon? I mean, clearly whoever made this is taking some inspiration from, like, Devil May Cry, but that's one of the basics of a game like this. Or, or think of like a game like God of War from around that time. You had like 20 moves you could do and mixing it up was fun. This is such a basic thing to screw up. Yeah, this has Cod McFarlane written all over it. Not being able to do basic things. Like have Spawn show up in your Spawn movie. Sam and Twitch are the real stars here. I ship those cute boys. What else is there to talk about? Well, the platforming is awkward and annoying. Sometimes Offspring will grab onto a ledge and hop up. Sometimes he'll just say, You're my bitch. And intentionally plummet to his death. Particularly in this mission where you go to Boulder, Colorado and keep slipping off the roofs of these numerous marijuana dispensaries and internet cafes. Well, it's like my brand of humor is just replacing nouns with the incorrect thing and that's it. Why does anyone watch this show? I'm obnoxious. I reassigned the controls so I could do this chain grapple thing with the R2 button to simulate the feeling of playing a normal video game made for humans. It's still kind of awkward to control and sometimes you can knock yourself out of it by hitting the button more than once. 
which has led me to falling on my incredibly toned spawn ass many a time. <laughs> Maybe it's because I'm not playing with an A-Log controller like the game said. The environments feel very appropriate for spawn. There's a huge amount of variation in the levels that keep them looking fresh. I appreciate that part a lot. And this game just looks like 90s comics to me. Dirty back alleys covered in trash, grimy rooftops, overly shiny space stations, and hell. I gotta admit, this is a pretty uncreative hell. Why does hell always look the same whenever you get there? Just floating rocks and spikes and oceans of lava. Why can't hell be something more creative and fun? Like an infinitely expanding Nazi internment camp? Or a school where the clock always says class ends in five minutes but the bell never rings and the teacher is making you relearn basic morality while hitting you with a ruler? Or wait, what about a YouTube comment section where everyone just calls you a virgin or says your voice is annoying because you didn't like the same video game as them? Is there a way to turn off comment notifications for one specific video and still be able to see all the other ones because my self-esteem is in the dumpster right now and that video just keeps getting more views? I'm really sad, guys. I'm taking fluoxetine now, please. The story of this game is about as complex as you'd expect. Devils and angels show up and start fighting on Earth. Spawn gets confused and just wants them to stop. And also a laser gets shot at Central Park and creates a soul NATO. He basically runs around meeting random characters from his side cast and they all tell him that the princess is in another castle. Until he eventually meets with Satan himself, well actually it's Malbolgia and technically he's not the same entity as Satan, but he's basically Satan, to get the answer that, well, heaven just decided to build a space station and blow up Earth because hell will no longer be a problem. Is Todd McFarlane a Scientologist? What does God need with a spaceship? We're collaborating with angels now? Spawn isn't voiced by Keith David, so I have to automatically dock points, but on top of that, the voice I hear in this game is just Dark Laser from Fairly Odd Parents, and that makes it way worse. The boss fights are interesting in that the character designs are rad, and some of the ideas are pretty cool, but often the execution makes them feel a little flat. Wow, this is really made by Todd McFarlane. Both times you fight the Violation Clan Luigi guy, you're just walking around him on these raised platforms and using projectiles. There's something about both of these fights that makes them feel unfinished. Like this is the first phase of a three-phase boss fight. But no, you just side strafe him, poke him with the chains, and he can't really do much to stop you. You also fight a spider tank a bulldozer with a mouth on it, an animatronic cyborg gorilla, and this cool guy named the Redeemer who has a neat costume. Okay, he's voiced by John DiMaggio and it makes it a little hard to take him seriously, unfortunately, because you just, you know, you just hear Jake the dog and Bender. You will return to Angel Station with me. If you fight me, you will lose. God, I hope no one makes erotic fan art of this thing. It's a robot and an animal. It's too easy of a target. All these bosses are kind of lame, except the first one with Redeemer, I think. I enjoyed having a one-on-one -on -one battle with like a normal guy who had his own set of heavenly powers to counter mine. It felt really cool, and I liked the arena that the fight took place in. It wasn't super complicated, but it just felt more interesting than the usual junk. Then for the final boss, he's just another spider tank. Well, okay, now he's a scorpion tank. Then he's a big guy who you can poke at with the chains. These chains don't even look like they're coming out of Spawn's belt a lot of the time, I'm not gonna lie. Okay, most of this game is relatively easy and linear, but the last few areas are a nightmare train wreck of level design because they stop being linear and it's so jarring. Now you're put into these big areas where you need to run around looking for stuff. Ghost Rider, how's it going, buddy? Are you doing something different with your hair? <laughs> the Heaven Station mission is probably one of the most irritating levels in any game I've played. The layout of this place is so hard to keep track of. The enemies here are weird and I never could figure out the rules of how this shield on them works. Sometimes it's there and sometimes it isn't. Whatever, fuck you. These angel warrior ladies, that are in no way legally affiliated with the character of Angela, created known by Neil Gaiman and trademarked by Marvel Comics, have this weird attack where they shoot fireballs in the air and it just hits you in the head over and over. When they do this, your only strategy is to just book it and take shelter until it's over. 
The only way to progress this level is to find all of these canisters and smash them real good, but this place is a maze! Eventually I got angry and started trying to save myself time by bugging it and hitting these things through the walls, which worked pretty well. Also, speaking of bugs, this level has a nasty habit of freezing when you jump too much. It happened to me four times, but I only managed to record two of them. Whoa. Whoa. I could definitely... Aw, oh, dude, the game crashed again. This is a problemo. I remember Xavier mentioning the uh, this problem too, that the game kept crashing in this mission. This is not good. Jesus, guys, give me a break here. My walk cycle has a hard time getting up flights of stairs. I'm a handy capable hell spawn. Okay, so like after you spent several hours smashing these things and running around these obnoxious mazes where everything looks the same, you wonder where you go. The original room has enemies that spawn <laughs> forever. You'd think all this spinning weird shit on the walls would be related to getting up to that higher level, but nah. You gotta wait for this platform in the middle to raise up, and if you miss it, you're gonna be waiting for what feels like several minutes for it to come back. Then it gets to the ground, and then you wait for what feels like several minutes for it to go up again. God damn. I feel more depressed than Al Simmons. No, the real Al Simmons. That... Todd McFarlane named the character after, and then sued for saying that he named the character after him? Thanks, Todd. Alright, so I'm finally up on the second level of this place, and it's filled with so many enemies I can't fight them all. My health is already low from playing fetch quests downstairs, so I'm just running past them. This game rarely gives you an objective, so I'll just smash anything that looks important. Like, whatever these things are. Now I'm stuck in this room where the door won't open because God hates spawn, literally. Alright, time to do another one of my last stand things. I'll fight everything in this room until eventually the door opens and they leave me alone. Thanks, crotch chains! I can poke any enemy to death with you! Finally, I can get to the last boss! Yeah, he's pretty lame. Earlier, Spawn and Male Bulge made a deal that Gene Simmons can finally be human again if he makes sure that the laser doesn't fire a second time. But it fires off just as the station explodes and Spawn goes home. So we get the best ending ever! Now it's time for Malbogia to fulfill his side of the bargain. I'm afraid that won't be happening, my friend. What? You were promised your humanity if the weapon was never fired again. But, indeed, it was. Shit. <laughs> Holy fuck! <laughs> <laughs> Holy fuck! Holy fuck! Holy fuck! Perfect! Shit. With every penny! But, no, yeah, I don't really recommend this one. Like, it's fine. Not terrible, it's fine. But jeez, if they worked on it for like another year, it could have been really great. Alright Diego, balls in your court. I reviewed your crappy spawn game, now you gotta do me a solid and review the Catwoman game. Cause God knows I'm not gonna touch that one. This game has taught me a valuable lesson though. Even though the world around us is going to hell, and we all can't do much to stop it, we can still put in some effort, and then get no reward at all for our hard work. Well. Well, I'll see you next time. Man. What a dumb game.